Hello, this is Siren Football with the report for the Wales 2-0 victory over Turkey. That's now four points on the board for the Welsh, who are all but certain to qualify for the last 16. An impressive performance by the boys in yellow today. I've got to say, every Welsh player out there can hold their heads high today. They were all superb, every single one of them. That was a resounding dominate, do, display of dominance. Good a balance between attack and defence. The Welsh back four stood firm at every Turkish attack. Joe Allen was a bit average in the uh, defensive midfield anchor role, but he did what he could, and he was replaced by Ethan Apadu for the last 20 minutes to shore up to protect that back four. Um, Kiefer Ball was not quite as impressive as he was against Switzerland, but he did what he had to do. His, okay, his passing did see a lot of heavy touches, but he is a big 6 or 5 lad, and he is there just to, to dominate the Turkish players in the air and just uh, essentially plays a pivot for the likes of Ramsey, Bale, Dan James and Joe Morel to run on to chances. D um, Ward, Danny Ward was absolutely sublime in goal today, made at least two or three key saves. Um, man of the match, I know a lot will give it to Aaron Ramsey. Yeah, he did miss a big chance early on, but then he did score but then, of course, he linked up with Gareth Bale for the first goal, but Gareth Bale put in a fantastic diagonal ball into the box. Ramsey latched on through a call through the Turkish defence and, and finished with such a plum. Um, Gareth Bale later on had a chance to score a penalty, blazed it miles over the bar, but then, of course, a minute later, he then had another chance when the Turkish keeper gave the ball away, only, of course... Um, Gareth Bale just didn't have the time to react and placed the ball into the back of the net properly, unfortunately. Gareth Bale, I will say, um, did pretty well, if I'm going to be honest, despite missing his chances. And he put in a lot, and he worked a lot harder today. Much better attitude than we've seen from him previously. I know Bale can be a bit of a prima donna at times, but today he turned up and put 100% and played for the shirt, good to see, because Gareth Bale, I know, has, his attitude has declined over the past few years due to his uh, feud with Real Madrid. Um, Dan James was once again so direct and so dangerous down the left-hand side, put that Turkish defence under so much pressure, really torn, really, really put the Turks on the back burner. And I have to say, the only really impressive play for Turkey was um, their Leicester City player, um, Shoroku, um, their centre-back, who obviously wears number four. Above from that, the rest of them were so bad, especially um, their lone striker, Birak Yilmaz, wearing number 17. You can tell he's 36 years old by the way he runs. Just, I know, just could not out sprint that Welsh back four to save his life. Who, by the way, are pretty slow themselves. But the Welsh back four, and you know, you look at the stats, 63% possession for Turkey, but they barely did anything with it, to be honest. Now, I know they had six shots on target, but they were all straight at Danny Ward who, by the way, did make a superb save towards the end. Most of their chances came from set pieces and corners. They had 10 corners to Wales of 7, but, you know, it was all very basic Route 1 football from the Turks, whilst the Welsh kept playing the ball around two feet, kept doing little 1-2 passes all over the pitch. And I've got to say, you know, even when they were, even when the Turks were chasing a goal, I've got to give the Welsh credit. They kept playing and kept attacking. I mean, in the last two quarters, the Welsh won. You know, Bale dribbled the ball out away from the corner flag. You know, OK, the first time, OK, Harry Wilson uh, blazed, uh, hit a defender and it went out for another corner. But, of course, for the last Welsh corner, Bale once again dribbled the ball out instead of just flinging it into the centre like I know a lot of... Uh, are tempted to do and just 
hit the goalkeeper and do something stupid like that. But no, Gareth Bill kept playing the ball and Connor Roberts sprinted all the way up from the back four to put the ball in the back of the net. The entire Wales team worked their socks off, go, b- b- defending as a unit, attacking as a unit, playing as one. There was no I in that way. There is no I in that Wales team. It is we. That Wales team, they will, but they will, they will run themselves to the ground for each other. That team has got some serious unity. Scotland, if you're watching, this is how you attack teams with championship standard players. Might, might I say? Yeah, I mean, I know obviously squad depth can be a problem for the smaller nations like Wales and Scotland, but Wales show that show to every small team out there that even if you don't have the best players and you have limited squad depth you can still play ball it is not impossible got to give 10 out of 10 to the Wales players the coaching staff and of course the fans who may have made a massive long distance journey all the way to Azerbaijan uh, this week I mean of course this was basically a Turkish home game because, of course, Azerbaijan and Turkey have such a strong uh, relationship with Turkey recognising Azerbaijan's independence back in 1991 when Azerbaijan left the Soviet Union. But the Turks were just so mediocre. They were playing like a team from the 1990s, to be honest. Like, just, just long balls everywhere. No real quality on any of their passes or uh, the chances they created. Just constantly trying to whip the ball high up in the air for your master chase. Just really boring, boring football. And of course, they committed 18 fouls, whilst Wales only committed 7 fouls. Of course, there was that incident uh, towards the end where, of course, there was that scuffle between um, Yil Mass and uh, Ben Davies and. Memphis and of course uh, the Turkish the Turkish uh, teammate Karnoglu number ten, really stupid scuffle between a lot of them. I know because apparently one of the world's players went down when he got hit by accident, and then Turkey realizing they were in trouble just got angry and just lost their heads. And really, Wales deserve all the credit in the world. I was I'm so pleased for Wales. Just a fantastic performance. And I actually hope, you know, I really do hope England try and replicate Wales' performance because Wales really did do justice to their jersey today. And, of course, the other game, um, uh, Finland versus Russia. Yep, it was a 1-0 win for the Russians. Um, Al Marunchuk scored the goal. With uh, the uh, main centre forward, this Zuba setting him up. It was a pretty good strike, you know. When you received a ball with his right foot, then switched onto the left and and uh, put and finished high up into the net. Finland huffed and puffed. Uh, their main striker, Pahanja Paolo, had four chances, had three of them blocked by. Um, uh, uh, by the Russian defence and then of course had a goal ruled out for offside you know got to give credit to Finland after the traumatic events on Saturday I mean it's not a nice feeling to know that you want to win in such um, horrible circumstances and you know they all will get well soon Christian shirts big real class from the Finns there having said that though just really didn't have the quality and I have to say um, you know Russia had 59% possession uh, 14 shots on goal and 3 of them on target 4 corners to just 1 for Finland and really I've got to say it Russia really stepped up their game today a massive improvement from the way they performed on Saturday against Belgium where they were just horribly dismal and had no intent of going forwards against Belgium, who quite rightly punished them and made them pay. Um, got to say, uh, their right back, Fernandes, I know he's a Brazilian, I know it seems so weird why the hell someone like him is playing for Russia, but um, he didn't look particularly quick, but, and uh, he, well, he got, uh, well, sorry, I'm going to have to look. He got replaced after just 26 minutes because of an injury, 
I mean, he was the guy who, of course, um, scored the equaliser against Croatia three years ago in a World Cup. But then missed the penalty. I mean, I have to say, though, uh, Finland will be kicking themselves, to be honest, because Russia are not that great a team. And now they have to go and play against Belgium. And hope they get a draw, which is really not going to be the easiest thing, unless, of course, Belgium play their second string team. Um... Although having said that, this uh, the Belgian second string team are very strong as well. So, oh dear, Finland, you really are in your got your your, your arms tied behind your backs. And I'm just saying the five three two formation. I know it's a very defence minded formation, but the trouble is Finland just don't have the quality to really try and play more attacking football. I'm afraid this is their first tournament. They do look like a rookie outfit. I'm afraid from this um. Line up Glenn Kamara, you know, Rangers player, did all he could, made some decent passes and, you know, Robin Lord uh, made some brilliant penetrating balls down the middle and around the team, but uh, Pookie pretty much just ran around endlessly, tried to uh, black dodge the chances, tried to press the Russian defence. Um... And I've got to say it, but as it was, Russia may took their chance, and I really feel sorry for Finland because it just seems like just you know there is that sense of um. I mean, I know Denmark are the ones who are most affected, but you know, I think I really do hope was it they've got a lot of a lot of ones around them, uh, making sure they're okay at the moment, because Finland, I think deserved to get a draw and he didn't and to be honest that getting that goal ruled out for offside was unfortunate but I have to say the Russian defence was actually pretty good pretty good well done Russia not that I really want you to do well because I don't really like Russia but <laughs> yeah I'm sorry for being biased but of course Nick, uh, Russia's last game will be against Denmark I think Denmark will probably reco mentally recover in time but I think they will want to pull themselves together to to, to really make Christian Eriksen proud was of course Finland will have the arduous task of facing Belgium's what most likely will be a second string Belgium team who are by the way are almost as strong as their first team so if you enjoyed this uh, quick video by Siren Football do all the usual stuff and I'll see you again soon